Hi guys, it's Kat here from Making It Australia and today we are going to be making a cactus jewellery tray. This jewellery tray is great for beginners, it's easy to use and it is a great way to store your jewellery. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is grab our baking paper and lay it down. We do not want to be making a mess. Grabbing your air dry clay. Now I like to use the Crayola clay because it does dry in 24 hours. Just grabbing out a huge chunk of clay. This is where it starts to get messy and fun. There we go. All right. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is really mash the clay together. Get it nice and warm in your hand so that it starts to flow together. Now I have had to tape down my baking paper because it does like to be a bit slippery. So, Chucking your clay in the middle. I like to use chopsticks to maintain a level width for the clay so that the base isn't going to be too lumpy and using your rolling pin to flatten it out. Now, to make your life a little bit easier, you can press the clay down to start with and then going in with your roller. It's going to roll out pretty big. So just making sure your chopsticks are either side. Picking it up, turning it around until we have something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so now that we have rolled out our clay to the level that we want it, we're going to make our shape. Now, I like to use anything that is circular shape. So you could use a cup or you can just freehand it if you're good enough. All right, grabbing your knife. I like to make the incision about a centimeter outside the width of this cup, just to make it a little bit bigger. The best thing about clay is it does not have to be perfect. And there we go. Taking away the cup, taking away the excess. Now don't get rid of this excess because we will be using it. Just chuck it to the side. And here we have a nice circle piece of clay. So before I came here today, I did create my own little tub of slip. Now, slip is important to bind the two pieces of clay together, whatever you're trying to make. So it does take about 24 hours for the slip to form. What you wanna do is basically grab a container, a bit of a tub, and chuck in some clay from your tub. Putting it in the bottom of the tray, you can squish it down, and then filling it with enough water to cover the clay. Leaving it for about 24 hours, and what will happen is it will start to form a consistency, almost like water. So using that leftover piece of clay that we just had from the circle, we want to roll this into a snake. And this is a fun part. It does get a little bit silly. Rolling out your snake. You want it to be about a centimetre in thickness. And like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's clay. Once it's dry, you can sand it down, you can form it into shapes that you want while it's still semi-drying. Rolling it out until it's nice and thin like so. All right, so now that we've got our snake, we are going to attach it to our base. Now, to keep clay sticking together, you do need to score the edges. So, taking your knife, you're just gonna to wanna to start making little incisions into the edge of the clay. All the way around, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, taking your snake, you're going to want to measure out the width of the clay. So, following around into the edges. Pulling it around, making sure it sits, and cutting off that excess. So we have something like so. Now take that snake off, and just chuck it to the side. I like to just put these edges together, just sort of blend them with your fingers. And again, we want to score this side of the clay so that it will stick to our base. So just coming around with the knife. And there we go. So our pieces of clay are now scored. And now what we're gonna to wanna to do is take our slip and bind these two together. So giving it a bit of a mix, taking the rounded edge, I like to just apply a thin layer. Now you can use your fingers. It does get a little bit messy. You can see it's starting to flow into those scores we just made. So taking your snake now and placing it on top. 
and pressing it down nice and firm. You can be really firm with the clay. Don't be um, too scared about being rough with it. It does mould to your hands with the warmth. Okay, so you should have something that looks sort of like this. It's not looking too appealing at the time, but it will get better. This is a very trust the process kind of project. All right. I like to grab it in my hands for this because I enjoy being rough with the clay. And you're gonna to wanna to take this flat edge and really start blending the two pieces together. So taking it and pressing the top part of the clay into the bottom, like so. All the way around the edges until you no longer see that harsh separation line. Okay, so all of our edges on the inside are blended. It's looking a little bit like teeth marks but we're now gonna work on the outside of the blending. So this is where I like to pick it up because it's just a little bit easier and just really sort of mashing those two sides together. Okie dokie, having a quick look around, making sure that all of the edges are blended. It's no longer a harsh line. And you have something that starts to look like this. Now it's the fun part. I'm gonna flick my hair back for this and we're going to get our hands dirty. Now you can use a paintbrush, you can use a sponge for all of these steps, but I really like to get in there and use my fingers. Taking a little bit of a slip, just to get my hands a bit wet so it'll glide nicely over the clay and start rubbing down those edges. The slip also helps to fill in any gaps in the clay. So when you do start making clay sculptures like this, you'll find that as the air gets to the clay, they do sort of split. So once your inside looks something like so, we're going to want to start on the edges. Now, I like to take a little bit of my fingers and just glide around the edges. This is where you can start to mould the clay to the shape that you want. So you can see I'm sort of flattening the edges, applying a bit of pressure and bringing them out to form a dish. All right, so now that we have something that resembles plate. You're going to want to pick it up and just flip it over to the bottom. Um, if you don't put any moisture into the bottom here, it will start to crack. So I like to again take my slip and just rub over some of these harsh lines. This part here, you can take your tools if you need to. So we have our base here. I like to take a sponge, just dip it in a tiny bit of water and wring it out and just really start sort of rubbing in those spots. The good thing about clay is although it takes 24 hours to dry, it is still moldable while it's drying. So again, once you've flipped it back over, you will probably have to just remold it to the shape that you want because we fixed up the bottom. So I just rub my fingers around the edges, making sure that it's sitting the way that I want. I'm going to grab a big chunk of clay now. And this is going to form our cactus. Again, moulding it in together in your hands, getting it nice and warm, rolling it into a ball. Alright, so we have our next ball of clay ready for our cactus. Now, I like to do the cactus not too large, not too small, roughly about three to four centimetres tall. And we want to make the base of the cactus thicker than the top so that it has uh, room to stick to the base and it's not going to fall over. So, using your hands again. I like to just form a peak with the clay. Okay, so once you've got something that looks almost like a teardrop, we're gonna form the cactus itself. Now this is about the size that I would want it to be. So I'm going to just lay it down, take my knife and cutting a section off the bottom to give it a flat edge. Like so keeping that piece of clay close by because we will need it. And you're going to have something that looks like this. This is going to form our cactus. Now, I like to set him aside just to get a little bit dry and a little bit firm while we work on the arms. So, taking your spare piece of clay, we're going to want to pull off some sections which are going to form our arms. Now the arms themselves want to be thin enough so that you can fit, say, a ring or some earrings onto them. So I like to do them about a centimetre thick. Rolling yourself a little snake again. So you have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, figure out where you want your arms to go. I like to do one 
a little bit higher than the other just to give it a little bit of an off center look. Growing your arm and cutting it off a section here. You want it to be about four centimeters. You want to bend that into the shape that you want. Looks a little bit like an arm. And figuring out where you want that to sit. So I like to do one a little bit lower, like so. And my second one will sit a little bit higher. So we have our cactus and we have our arms. Now we have to put everything together. I like to mark out and just sit them in there nicely just to figure out where I want them. Like with the base, we do need to score the sides and we will need to add some slip. So where you want your arms, scoring the clay on the cactus itself and also scoring the arms of the cactus. Now that we have our pieces, we're going to add our slip. So again, just grabbing a blob of that slip there and just touching it onto the sections that you'll be connecting. Set your slip aside. Now the fun part, we are going to attach our arms to the cactus. This part can be a little bit fiddly and a bit tricky. Don't worry too much if you mess it up, you can just start again. It's going to look something like this. So set him to the side. We haven't blended the edges of that yet, which is, will be our next step. But I'm just going to mark out where I want the cactus to sit on the tray. So sort of finding the center. I'm just going to make a nice big X. Looks about center to me. So just scoring that section. Now that we've had this guy drying for a couple of minutes, we're going to take our tools and blend those edges together again. So, using that curved edge, we're just going to start lightly blending those edges together. Okay, once we have our arms, we're going to want to tidy up those edges. So, again, you can use your paintbrush if you want to, you can use your fingers. I think I'm going to use my fingers today. I'm not going to use slip, I'm just going to dip my fingers in a little bit of water because we already have a bit of slip on there. So with that water, you're just going to start blending those edges. It is a lot easier doing clay with short fingernails, so I would recommend a trim before you play with clay. Alright, so we have the base of our sculpture ready to go and we have our cactus. Now we need to join the two pieces. So we have scored our base already and we also want to score the underside of the cactus so that they stick together. Okie dokie, so grabbing that slip again and just layering a little bit over this part here. It's going to start filling in those holes. All right, and now we're just going to place him in the middle. We'll need to just press it down nice and firm. Make sure it's in the space that you want it to be. I think that looks quite even, even enough. And you're going to want to take that again and start blending those edges together. So I like to start from the cactus and pull down. We made the base nice and thick for this reason, so that we have a little bit to work with. All right, we are connected. Now, a little bit of water just in between the fingers and just smoothing over those sections. Again, you can use a tool, you can use a paintbrush. I just like to get messy and use my fingers. And we're looking nice and blended now. So just straighten it up, really mold it into the position that you want. And there you have it. Let that dry for 24 hours and then we are going to hit it with some paint. Once your clay has completely dried, it will turn a lighter color. You're gonna to wanna to take some sandpaper. Now I use a bit more of a rough grit sandpaper in the start just to file down those harsh edges. And then we are getting ready to paint. So I have already put a base coat of white on this one. Uh, it will take about 20 to 30 minutes between each coat to dry. So just making sure that you're, you're leaving it enough time before you add your next coat. So grabbing yourself somewhere to put your paints, I like to use a board. And I'm gonna go straight in with some green. Put that straight onto the board. Nice glove. Taking one of the larger paint brushes, I'm gonna just dip it in a tiny bit of water just to get the brush nice and wet. And then we're going to go straight in with the green. It'll need about two coats to cover the white. So just give it some time between coats to dry. While that's drying, I like to go in with a bit of a smaller brush 
and this is just something that I like to do, you don't have to, but I do like to just add a little bit of detail onto the base. So all I'm doing is just taking some green and I'm just putting little dots, just all around. All right, so now that we have our base down of green, we are going to add some dimension by creating some stripes. This will give us a lighter shade of green. Starting from the bottom, we're going to draw lines all the way to the top. Once we get to the arms, I like to create points on each arm. So not coming up over and then up to the top point, we want to start our point at the top here. So we'd come out from the middle of the cactus and up to our secondary points. There we go. All right, so we have our lines up and down our cactus, up down through the arms too, and they all bring to three points here. Now what we're gonna do, is take another small brush and we're going to set out some white. Now it is a little bit tricky given the size of the piece to create spikes so I like to just add little dots. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start adding white dots along these lines. And our last step is to just add some flowers. You can use whatever colour you like. I'm going to go with red today because I do like the contrast but yellow is also really nice with green as well. And the flowers are going to be pretty easy. All it will be is five little dots in a circle to form a flower. So you can do these wherever you like. I like to do one sort of close to the top. The decoration part is sort of completely up to you. You can do whatever you like when it comes to decorating. The cactus doesn't even have to be green. Usually I would go in with a white dot in this flower, but today I'm gonna to go in with a yellow dot. Now you wanna let this sit for about an hour, two hours, and then we're going to finish it off with a varnish. Now you can use any kind of varnish, a gloss, a matte, but today I'm going to be using a satin finish. So it's going to come out very liquidy, but you pretty much just want to pour it straight onto the piece. Using a brush, blending that varnish all over the piece, making sure to get every section of the cactus. Now once we've done the cactus itself, we're going to just pour some onto the bottom and then we're just going to blend that around with our brush. Making sure to go all the way up the sides. And there we have it. Nice and varnished. It's looking nice and glossy. Give that about 72 hours to dry before you apply your second coat. What I like to do once I've finished the varnish on the top after it's dried for 72 hours, I'll flip it upside down and put it into a cup. That will let you get the sides and the bottom with the varnish and you're not going to break the top of the cactus. And there we have it, our finished cactus jewellery tray. Thank you for coming along this journey with me today and I hope that you enjoyed playing around with some clay and getting your hands dirty. You can find all of these materials at your local spotlight. Happy crafting.